I got crazy hair. All right, hey. Are we on? I, th I think I think we're on. You're you're on. I know. I was just making faces <laughs> to check. <laughs> hey, See if it was real. It doesn't look the same. I don't think it's. Is it going? I think it's going. It says live so, right there. Where? Yeah, right there. It says oh. live right there. How come it doesn't have the thing? I, I don't know, but we're we're live. So be careful what you say on Here's live. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. Hey, so it's good to see everybody here Hi. today for Refocus with Wade and Michelle. I'm Michelle. his wife, Michelle. Yeah, we're going to check real quick to make sure this is on because it's, it's weird. Man, my hair looks crazy, y'all. Oh, we are. This lying, it's like. Yeah, right. Uh, woo. It looks good. I know. Yep, I'm sorry. I know it. Sorry, 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 sorry. Michelle. Sorry. Okay. We're having technical difficulties. We're not. Okay. I'm perfectly we're good. fine. Hey, we're glad everybody's here for lunch. We we had Taco Casa for lunch. Yes, we did. Delicious. It was. We Delicious. enjoyed Taco Casa. Yeah. And Our kids were not as excited. Yeah, and we just got back from a week in, or a little bit less than a week in Colorado. Uh-huh. Yeah, but now we're back. Yeah. It was so nice. It was only 71 degrees at the highest. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna try to get refocused. It's it's Wednesday, and it's midweek, and so we're gonna try to get refocused in midday, mm -hmm. midweek. So, you want to pray for us, and then I'd I'll love close to. This out? Okay, let's do. Thank you, Jesus, for this time, and help us, God, center ourselves on you and um, keep you the main thing. Jesus, we ask that you speak through Wade and I, that maybe anyone can glean. A closer relationship with you. Um, thank you, God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Ben. Yeah, Ben. On, on props Sunday. to Ben. Great message. Yeah, he was, he was on It's the fire. best message we've heard in a while. <laughs> I'm teasing. Yeah, and we, we got to hear it over, like, yes. the, the whole road trip because it kept buffering. Buffering. It, took buffering. Us, it was like a 30 minute sermon that took us like four hours to watch. But we persevered. We it was, did. It was good. It was good. So yep. what stood out to you on Sunday from the message? Well, Wade, let me look at my notes. Um, One of the things that stood out to me while you're pulling that up is that he said, uh, his professor said that this is the season you have been called to. The, yeah. What if this is the season God has called you mm -hmm. into, not a speed bump? Okay. What, is, what does that mean for you? Or did that resonate with you? It may not have resonated with you. It did. I, I think um, I'm kind of a in-the-moment person anyway. Mm -hmm. This finally so was one message that was more applicable to someone else. Not, I mean, it was obviously applicable are you, to me. Are you saying that you heard a sermon and you thought, man, I hope that he's listening? I did. I did do that. I don't know if that's Sorry. the point of the sermon. I know. I know, I know it's sermons. terrible when you like send that message and be like, God told me you needed to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> but And I'm yeah. not saying I don't struggle with it. Um, it was an amazing message and but I gleaned a lot from it. But you're saying you really wanted me to learn a lot from it. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no. I'm just saying it was a Good message for everyone to hear. <laughs> All right. Other than what you think I need to hear from it, what is it that what is it that stood out to you about it? Um, that well, I just what he said was you can be so focused on your future that you don't see what's going on right now. And I loved that, especially with all the corona stuff going on, mm -hmm. the quarantining. You know, we really were able, it was hard work, but during quarantine, we really tried to have some focused family time. Mm -hmm. And um, it was amazing. It was wonderful. We loved that yeah. part of it. Um, so that was, it's good to remember what's in front of you right now. Mm -hmm. um, Wade is very much of a planner, and so I think it might have been harder for him to not focus on, uh, well, actually, with all the change and, and church planning, it's hard not to know, you know, what's going to be happening in a month or even a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. it was, I like that. Focus on what's, I mean, not always. You do have to plan, but focus. Right. Yeah, and, you know, listening to Ben, you know, Ben is in his early 20s. I'm in my late 40s. 
and and there are some similarities. Yeah, he and Ben be, are actually between, very similar between us. They're but, Enneagram threes. Okay, but but there but there is there is something uh, different between a, a twenty three yeah. year old version of of me and a forty seven year old version because I, I I remember there had been seasons where. Uh, you know, plans locked in, you know, we're going to do it regardless. I think I'm still a planner, but as I've gotten older, I know that there's flexibility yeah. in that. And you got to leave some room for the Holy Spirit. There, there's adaptations Sorry. for that. And, you know, I I haven't always known that, but that, that comes, and I still have to be reminded from time to time. But this is, you know, this is a season that, of life that God has called you into, not a speed bump. There have been seasons where it has been this is a speed bump this right. is what I need to to get here mm-hmm. to get there and but maybe as I'm getting older or hopefully more mature not just age but hopefully more mature yes uh, I'm saying that, that God in the moment is really what the, the key is right yeah yeah so one of the questions on, on relationships matter uh, actinmethodist.com slash relationships matters is Ben asked this question you know when has God upended your plans mm. I think it's a great question, mm-hmm. and one of the things I thought of when I read that is, uh, do you remember that time that we were driving down the road? I do. You bring it up a lot. That we were driving down the road <laughs> in Lubbock, and where do you where were we in front of? There's a discrepancy in where we were in front of. Where, I say, where do you say? Where we you were say? driving. We weren't. We were in front of maybe like a grocery store. We were yeah. not in front of Walmart. In front of Walmart, and so. What we were driving around, uh-huh. and then we were not talking about really anything in particular. And then, right. what did you say? I think you should become a pastor. And what did I say? No way. Yeah, and uh, because that was not on the radar, we right. were not even really thinking about mm-hmm. that. Uh, You're about had, to graduate from Texas Tech. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and Hannah was on her way because uh-huh. she was born in April, and we and I graduated in August. Uh-huh. So this was sometime before Hannah, uh-huh. if I remember right, and that was a that was a really really big disruption because I shut it down really fast. Yes, he did. Because that's not that wasn't on our radar. Uh-huh. But it not only upended my plans, it kind of upended your plans, didn't it? Yeah. You, I mean, it's really? a yes or no question. No, no it's yes. not. Do you want to do you want to talk? <laughs> do you want to talk any more about? Because Ben said. Just to liken it back to what Ben said, Ben, you know, felt like going to Asbury was something that that he was feeling let's do, even though it it wasn't really what he felt comfortable doing because mm-hmm. he was, you know, he liked it here. Mm-hmm. It, it, is there some similarity between that and uh, being the wife of a pastor? Yes, I mean, Come yes, on, Michelle. It, well, baby, it, I don't <laughs> know what you're asking. It did it upend your plans? Did you have plans growing up that yes. you would be the pa- a, a I wanted wife to of be pastor? all I wanted to be was a rich housewife. <laughs> <laughs> so all those plans did come true. Yes, I'm living the dream. No, um, yeah, you know, I didn't. Ne- I never planned on us being in ministry, and of course, it's. Um, been amazing that, that it's just a testimony to how much god knows better than we do so um but it has been upending oh yeah up from what our original oh it, our original every plans. step in ministry too like i'm just hey we we want to retire here mm-hmm. no nope. you know it's just every god is just always full of imagination and i think he has such a great sense of humor well and then we also have four kids yes and, and that was nowhere on our radar. And I mean nowhere. Like having kids at all? No, I mean having the last two. Listen, we prayed for a third baby after Jacob. And it just didn't happen. We were not willing to do the medication route because uh, we had two healthy kids. Yeah. And we thought, this is not in God's will for mm-hmm. us. So we're happy. And then, and then 10 years later. 10 years later. Three pregnancy tests later, we saw that. Because the first two were never Reliable. Accurate. Yep. You just can't trust them. Especially when you're surprised by them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was definitely um, a surprise. But Well, and, and when you called me and said, hey, I, I uh, need you. I, when you called and said, I think I need you to run by Walmart or Walgreens uh-huh. to get a pregnancy test, I thought she was kidding. 
I don't remember it that way. I do. I remember it very vividly, Michelle. I think we need to start journaling every single day so we can go back and compare notes. Yeah, yeah. As so we can make sure that your version is correct. Yes. Okay. We got to get serious there. Yeah, yeah. Oops. No. Oops. Did I stop us? No, no. no. Right okay. There. So one of the things that that um, well that's, that is being serious because it impacts. We're talking about how God upends and is this a season of life God has called you into, not a speed bump. So. So even though Caleb and Rebecca were not necessarily part of our plans, man, what a, what a great season mm-hmm. that's been in. Same thing with the ministry, same things with the ebbs and flows, right? Mm-hmm. One of the the passages that Ben focused on is James chapter 4. James, mercy. Yeah, and he focused on 13 through 15. I actually want to read all the way through uh, 17 because I think it's really good also. James was writing to the, as Ben said, it was a general letter to the Christians, right? He says, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. And isn't that true for all of us? Yes. I mean, especially during these last four months. Does yeah. anyone know what's happening yes. from one day to the next? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Yeah. I, I just, you talk about perspective. That's, mm-hmm. that's true. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, this is this is 16 to 17, Ben didn't bring this up. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. And it is, arrogance is thinking that you are in control or you have more power than mm-hmm. you do. So when James is saying you boast in your arrogant schemes, going, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to do this, two weeks I'm going to do this, in two years from now I'm going to do that, there is an element of of arrogance about that. All such boasting is evil. That's, That's crazy James, talk. James was hardcore. He was serious. Yeah. And if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and then doesn't do it, it is sin for them. So this is a season of life God has called you into, not a speed bump. So that whole rendering of what James was saying is, is yeah, okay, what is this season that we're in and what is it that we're supposed to do, not just for ourselves, but for other people? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> You're not okay. I'm not full, not full I, I, I just, I mean, yes, I agree with you. There's okay. not an, anything to add to that. So the the three things that Ben talked about on Sunday about the three focuses was how you plan matters. Yes. How, how do you plan? I ask you what's on the calendar. <laughs> no, you, no, no. How do how do you um, how do you plan like in general? Because you and I plan differently. Yes. Like I, Wade I, has a piece of paper and writes stuff down and then li- puts it in his phone. I'm a list maker. Yep. And, you know, I just, I don't necessarily mark it off in that particular order. Mm-hmm. But, like this morning, I got to the church, wrote down everything that I need to give attention to today that I remembered. And then as other things come up, I write on the list. And then as I do it, I mark it off. But it's Can not I necessarily that too? order. He also, after he does something that yeah. wasn't on the list, he adds it to the list so he can mark it off. Oops, sorry. True that, fact. Is, that is true. Mm-hmm. So you don't do that. How no. Do you, how do you plan? Mine's all right here. I just know, I know what I need to do, and I do it. Okay. So how did... <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so that's how I plan, and I, I mean, I'll call you or text you and say, hey, we're doing this on this day. And you add it to the calendar. Yeah, so we just plan differently. And if you are part of another human out there, you probably have understood the joys and the tension sometimes when you have two people Mm -hmm. who plan differently. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so uh, he focused on when you how you plan matters. He he was talking about who you are mm-hmm. and not what you do is, is matters in how right. you plan. I like and that. he referenced uh, Ephesians chapter 2 where, where the Apostle Paul says that you are saved by grace mm-hmm. through faith, not by works. Yes. And that's, you know, that's a good reminder. Yeah. You want to you add anything? <laughs> Why are you <laughs> giving just, me a hard I'm time I'm not giving you a hard time. I'm just inviting <laughs> you to be part of it. Okay. And God's plan is not always your plan. Yes, that's right. kind of what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, is there another example of when God's plan has not necessarily been yeah, your plan? Yeah, I think, you know, when we were down in Austin and we had gone to all these trainings about new church start, we'd been out in the field visiting other churches to see what worked and didn't work, and, um, well, are those our kids making all that racket? 
probably. Anyway, um, we, uh, you know, we had all this stuff studied and what, you know, planned mm-hmm. what we were going to do, and what we thought would work, and um, <laughs> it was, you know, we found out mm-hmm. real quick that's not what God intended. Mm-hmm. Not that um, we, you know, the, the plans that we had at the beginning, it. The, the plans had to adapt because right. it wasn't just a matter of us having an entrepreneurial spirit right. and putting a plan together. Yes, it, the church is God's idea. Yes, right. Yes, and so we had and to we had to, we had to ad- and we had to adapt yes. to God's plan. Yes, <laughs> yes. Not, not have Very God true. adapt to ours. Right. Yeah, that's that's key. Right, and that and that leads to the third point. Sometimes God's plans make you uncomfortable. Yes, so true. Yeah, because you know we really had a pretty good plan. Yeah, we did. Well, and I mean, I know we bring that example up all the time, but there are, um, of course, in everyday life, there are many times that, um, you know, going to work sometimes, having Mm -hmm. to be kind to somebody who's just really a jerk, um, it does make you uncomfortable. You feel vulnerable Mm -hmm. when, um, you know, you're trying to be kind even though someone else has hurt you. Um, That makes you uncomfortable, but, you know, there's always... No, I, to me, there seems to be a reward in doing mm. that. Um, that's a, just that's a, a piece. That's a really good point because this is a season of life God has called you into, not a speed bump. Uh-huh. So it's those relationships where our faith really gets tested, right? right? And so it's not always the big, gigantic movements. Right. It's okay. This season of life that you're in, you may person, hate your job. Where you, yeah, you may hate your job. You may want more certainty. You may not like the people mm-hmm. that you live with mm-hmm. or that you work with. Mm-hmm. But instead of seeing it as a speed bump that you just got to get through, what if it's the yeah. season that God has yes, called you into? Yes, He wants into? you there for a reason. Yeah, I wish I, you know, or he's wor- or he's working through that yeah. season yes, to bring something so good out of it. Yes, I've had when I was young, my first couple of jobs, I was a terrible employee. Um, just I had a bad attitude, and I remember thinking, "Oh Lord, just." Please help me find a better mm-hmm. job. Yep. When instead I've been should have been praying, Lord, what's your will for me today? Mm-hmm. What? How can I bless others with you? I mean, it doesn't like we were saying. It doesn't. It's in the little things yeah. too. Yeah, but change that attitude. Yeah, but we we don't we don't like we don't like uh, to be uncomfortable. We don't like to be uncomfortable. That's right. Okay. So this is a season of life God has called you into, not a speed bump. So what is the season of life that God has called you into right now? What is something that you're trying to get through as soon as possible, but maybe that's not what God's plan is for you right now. Maybe through this moment of not having an idea what tomorrow is Mm -hmm. going to bring, maybe God's wanting to use this as a season to grow you deeper. Maybe... You know, during the summer, with all your summer plans upended, maybe God's wanting to use this season to grow you. Yeah. How how is it that God's trying to grow you? Yes. Because uh, he he's, he continues to grow us every day. <laughs> um, What'd you find? Last thing, I just don't plan your life so meticulously mm. that you plan God right out of it. Yeah, yeah, and and and, and also as you. As you live into this faith and you claim the faith, but as you also mature in it, ask ask God the question through prayer. And it really is yeah. a prayerful question. Yeah. God, what is it that you are up to? Today. Yeah. Where are you yeah. working and where can I join you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where are you working, God, and where can I join you? Yes. You pray that multiple times throughout the day and you really focus on it, you'll be surprised at how much yes. you see God at work. The scales fall off of your eyes and you're like, whoa. And it's something little like. Mm-hmm. Um, can I bring someone lunch? Just, yeah. you know, anyway, yeah. God hey, is good. Hey, thanks for being on at lunch with us as we refocus. I want to pray for you. Yes. And, uh, man, we're so thankful for all of you. Yes. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for today. And God, we thank you for every season that you're bringing every person who hears the sound of our voice into right now. Would you do your wonder working power and would you stir them enough to be able to pray to you going, Lord, what is it that you are up to? And how can I join in with you? I thank you for all these folks. And I thank you for my bride. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks, y'all. Bye. How do we?